In this video, we are going to set up our TCP connection class, which will contain data about our specific connection. So first, let's create a new item in Peanut. We're going to call this TCP connection. And for our connection class, we're going to include our socket header because we'll need to be able to access this. We're going to have a constructor that takes in the socket as well as it takes in the IP endpoint of that specific connection. We're going to have a close function just to close the TCP connection, which will close our socket, and then later it will clean up some other things as well. We're going to have a toString function just to take the IP endpoint and give us a clean representation of that IP instead of printing out the individual bytes on a bunch of lines. We're of course going to store the socket for this TCP connection. And then down here, we're going to store the IP endpoint as well as the string representation. And the string representation will be printed out when we call it to string. Let's first generate these definitions. Let's go ahead and open the constructor and wrap this around the PNET namespace. We know that we are going to initialize the socket to be whatever socket we pass in in the endpoint to be whatever endpoint we pass in. For the close function, we are just going to call socket close. And for the string function, we are going to return the string representation. In the constructor, we still have to build the string representation. We're going to do that by first putting a left bracket, and then we're going to put the IP address, then we're going to add a colon, and we're going to print out the port, which of course we have to call to string because port is an unsigned short, and then we will have the right bracket. Now let's go up to the include me file, and instead of including socket, let's include TCP connection because TCP connection also encapsulates the socket header. Let's go back down to our server CPP and where we are accepting a connection. What we can do is after we accept a connection, we can create a TCP connection object called accepted connection. And for the constructor, we will pass in the new connection socket. However, now we run into the issue where we need to pass in an endpoint for this new TCP connection. And we don't have the endpoint yet for our new connection. So we're going to modify this accept function. Let's open that up and go to the declaration. So what we'll do is we're going to have an optional argument for the endpoint, where they can pass in a pointer to the endpoint. And if they pass in null pointer, obviously we are not going to assign this, but if they pass in the address of an endpoint, then we are going to overwrite whatever they pass in with the endpoint of our new connection. Let's go back to the definition for accept, add that to the parameters. If we scroll down, what we will do is for our new connection endpoint, we'll say if endpoint is not null, then we are going to sign the endpoint. We are just going to pass in what we had before. And we are no longer going to print new connection accepted here. Let's copy that and go down and do the same thing for internet protocol version six. So if we get a new connection, we're not going to print it anymore. We're just going to assign the endpoint if they did pass in the address for the endpoint. Now let's go back to our server. And what we can do is, let's first clarify, this is the new connection socket. We can also create an IP endpoint, new connection endpoint. The issue here is we don't have a default constructor for IP endpoint. So we'll just open up IP endpoint and set up a constructor that doesn't really do anything. And now if we go back, that should take care of that issue. When we call accept now, we will pass in the address of our new connection endpoint. And when we create the uh, TCP connection, we can also pass in that new connection endpoint here. Next, what we are going to do is when we accept the new connection, we're going to do a printout with the IP and put that a new connection was accepted. After we accept the connection, we are going to close the connection by calling the close function that we had made. And now what you'll see is when we get a new connection, 
you'll see we get uh, the IP address, and then we get the port, and then we get new connection accepted. So now we're getting uh, a little bit cleaner info, but we still have this one last issue where there's all these blanks. Now part of that is because inside of our string we have a bunch of null terminators. What I have decided to do to fix the string issue is add a new header called helpers. This is just going to be for some uh, string trimming crap. And this is going to have trim functions to remove uh, blank spaces and null terminators from strings. What we'll do is if we go into the IP endpoint CPP, go to the top, we're going to add an include for that new helpers header that I just put in. And what we're going to do is after we determine the IP string and the host name inside of the uh, constructors for the IP endpoint, we're just going to trim the IP string and the host name to get rid of those blanks and null terminators. And the first example is for IPv4 if they pass in the actual IP address. The next example for is if they pass in a host name. We're going to trim them at that point. If we go down to IPv6, if they pass in the direct address, we're going to trim them both at this point. And then if they pass in the host name, we will trim them at this point. Now, there's also another constructor where they pass in the pointer to the sock adder. We'll have to do the same here. For IPv4, we will trim. And then for IPv6, we will trim. And really, since these both will hit this line of code down here, we can just put it down there once instead of here twice. Now what happens is when we run the server, what we get is a much cleaner address where we just get the IPv6 address and then a colon and then the port. In the next video, we are going to set up a vector of TCP connections for all of our clients. We are going to look at beginning receiving data from our clients, as well as checking if the connection was dropped for a specific client.